Things are about to get very interesting. There is a tornado warning about 10 miles from here. Where I'm at right now, in conjunction with these storms, there's no leaving. If I head out of here, I head right into those storms. So the best thing that I could do is just stay put. My friends, welcome to this episode of the Outdoor Gear Review. Yes, a storm is on the way. Currently, it's misting a little bit. It's not really raining, but folks, it is super, super windy. These winds are easily 30 miles an hour. As I'm getting away from the ridge there, it is calming down just a little bit, and that's a good thing. For this trip, we are out together for numerous things. First off, we're out here to hike. Second, we're going to set up a camp. Three, we're going to eat some good food. Four, we are going to enjoy this storm, this rain together. All right. What I'm going to do here is start a GPS trek. And basically this is going to record my track as I hike. And I'm going to use this to make my way back to this location. For this trip, I'm going off trail. Who knows where we are going to end up. Wow, look at that tree. That is gnarly looking. There is nothing like hiking in a forest like this in a boreal forest. It is so unique, kind of creepy. I love it. This really is incredible. Where I'm at has a rather interesting history. So imagine a series of mountaintops. So it's like mountaintop, mountaintop, mountaintop. On each of these mountaintops, there's a series of balds. So you have a bald on one, surrounded by trees. Another bald, surrounded by trees. Another bald on another mountain, surrounded by trees. The Native Americans explained this in their own unique way. They said that it was the devil's footprints. How interesting is that? I'm not sure if you all could see it very well, but it almost seems like there's a path through here. You could definitely see it over here. It's more than just a game trail. I've seen plenty of those. If you look through there, you could see that this has been cleared out. That is a game trail. This is not. By the way, it has begun raining. It's pretty light, but hey, I'll take it. As far as the temperature goes, it is about 59 degrees Fahrenheit, which really, it's not that warm, but when you have rain gear on and you're going uphill, yeah, it's warm. 
That's where we came from. This is where it's going. The question is, do I want to go this way? I don't think so. I want to keep going on top of this mountain. Up here is my destination. Now, speaking of which, I really do not have a destination. More than anything, I'm just hiking to explore. I just want to see where it goes. Look at how thick that is. I just came across this tree stump here. You can see how it's scattered all across the ground. That's because of a black bear. A black bear has torn this apart looking for grubs and whatnot. Yes, this is black bear country. Am I concerned? Nope, not at all. It's one of the nice things of hiking and backpacking in the middle of nowhere. No one comes here. And because of that, the bears are not accustomed to humans and they're super scared. With a trip like this, what makes it so fun is that you have no destination. You're just out to explore. And that, my friends, is pretty special. When talking about navigation, people oftentimes ask me if I use ranger beads in conjunction with other items. And the answer is no, not generally. To use them properly and accurately, you really, really, really have to focus. It's all about keeping count. And it's one of those things, as you're hiking along, you're keeping count. You look over here, you see a big rock, and all of a sudden your count's off, right? You get distracted for a second, and all of a sudden ranger beads are useless. In other words, it just takes a great deal of focus to use them properly. And that's not always easy to do. I do have the ability to read a map, use a compass, use ranger beads, and so on. I don't generally navigate that way. It's a backup, but it's not my primary method. The simple fact is, is that the technology has gotten so good that it really is hard to beat. And that's especially true with like cell phones. Cell phones now make the best GPS units that you can buy, far better than standalone handheld units. I personally don't remember the last time that I saw a handheld GPS unit that was actually impressive. They're slow, the software's not updated, and that simply isn't the case with your average phone. The processors are super fast. They're using the latest GPS tech, fast to locate and to triangulate. You just can't beat them. I've made it fairly high, fairly far onto the mountain. I think I'm going to begin a circle here and continue to check out the west side of this. Right now I'm just like exploring. I'm looking for potential campsites. And let me tell you, there are a ton. <laughs> this area for me is like a secret gem. So few people know about it, and that's exactly the way I'm going to keep it. Because I'm now going back to where I started, I'm going to stop that. And I'm going to back to start, track back. Okay. It's one of those things right now where it feels ominous, if that makes sense. 
everything's so quiet all of a sudden. It feels like something's coming. When you're hiking in a forest like this, you have to be careful because you never really know what's underfoot. Here's a good example of that. I just took a step and plunged over a foot down. Then when I put my hand on this to brace myself, look, it's rotten. Check this out. We're on a cliff. You can see how it starts down there. It builds up, comes over here, and continues to build up as it goes up the mountain. I think it's about to start raining. It is substantially darker now than it was when I got here. So let's go ahead and change out the battery on the GoPro here. I'm not sure if I'm going to have time to do it later or not really time. I don't think I'll have a dry place to do it. So welcome back everyone. The battery has been changed. We're good to go. It is drizzling just a little bit now. Since I have my pack open, I will uh, show you all something. So with this pack, it has an internal dry bag, which is really, really nice. So this is how I run it. I have all of my equipment that I wanna keep dry inside of it. Then on top of that, I have my tarp. That way, when it comes time to deploy this, I could do so very quickly, very easily, and none of my gear gets wet. What the hell is that? <laughs> my radar notification. We'll check it on my phone real quick. Oh. A tornado watch has just been issued for this area. It expires in six hours. Oh. <laughs> Interesting. It looks like rain is about to begin. The storms are still pretty far off, but they're coming. The odds of a tornado here are very low, but it certainly is possible. I don't want to be in a tornado by any means, but if I was going to be in one, this is not a bad place. This is not a bad spot. My best chance for survival is to get right next to one of those rocks, lay down, and just hope and pray. Check out this rock. This is a great example of excellent shelter. You have this large rock crawling down there. That would be a safe place to go. I wouldn't be guaranteed anything, but that's a good spot. Now, it should be mentioned that I did not know it was going to storm like this today. There was a chance of storms, but nobody said anything about tornadoes. I am using my watch here to navigate my way back. Yeah, underneath that moss is a root and it's super slick. And as you saw, I just spilled. Look at the size of this rock. I mean, that thing is huge. This over here for scale is about six foot tall. I am going to go around that this way. Okay. 
I am now on top of that huge rock and I'm making my way across. Going around and coming back up, that was a really, really good move. Now the forest is opened back up and it's easy hiking. As I'm hiking along here, I'm thinking about a conversation that I had with my buddy Tony the other day. If you're not familiar with his channel, make sure to go check him out. That is AB Camping. He's a good guy. I think he likes being out in the rain just as much as I do. Anyways, he said that being out in the rain is his happy place. I don't think I could have put it any better. Being out in the rain is my happy place too. I absolutely love it. I am not far away now, roughly 320 steps. You need to make sure to have with you very long sections of cordage just in case. So with this tarp here, I already had it guide out, but it wasn't long enough. I had to go to this tree here to get the proper setup. This setup here is only possible thanks to this. The winds are coming in this way. I can sit here fully protected. That is, of course, as long as the winds don't change direction. <laughs> Now everyone, that feels good. Let's see, in total here, we hiked 3.8 miles. So that's not bad. Not bad at all. Temperature 53 degrees. You may have noticed that I put a pad on the ground and that is so this chair doesn't sink into the dirt because it would. This soil here, first off, it's very mossy, but underneath it's very soft. Without this, the chair would just sink right into the mud but that prevents that from happening. Things are about to get very interesting. I just checked the weather, looked at the radar, there is a tornado warning about 10 miles from here. It does not look like the storm is going to come this way, but it is going to be very, very close. Where I'm at right now, in conjunction with these storms, there's no leaving. I mean, if I head out of here, I head right into those storms. So the best thing that I could do is just stay put. Already, I'm hearing some thunder. My plan is to make coffee, make lunch, and hunker down. That's basically all that I can do. For lunch, I'm having a Happy Yak Express Beef Shepherd's Pie meal. This is the second meal that I've tried from this company. The first one, I can't say did much for me. For myself, this will be the last one that I try.
Before the storm hits, let's talk about this tarp for a second. People ask me all the time, what would I personally use as an emergency shelter? This is it right here. I am a huge fan of tarps. I love them. There's no better shelter in my opinion. If you know what you're doing, you could pitch these in a second, in a heartbeat. You could pitch them in the forest like this. You could pitch them on a hill with no trees. You could pitch this on a bald with no trees. It all goes back to experience. This is going to be exceptionally strong, waterproof. This is a square tarp, 10 by 10. Tons of tie off points, super, super durable. In my opinion, there's nothing better than this right here. Once you have the principles down, you can set these up super quick, just like I did here. This took five minutes or less, super simple. I've read in the comments before where some viewers say that you can't use a tarp like out on a bald in a location with no trees and so on. That my friends is absolutely false. You absolutely can. Again, it goes back to experience. The sky out here is black, everyone. It is black. That is coming our way, everyone. It is what it is, and now it's the time to hunker down. If I have to, if I feel like there's a need, I will go into the forest and get as close to one of those rocks as I can. Whew. Okay. Let's do this. It's on. It is now go time, my friends. And for me, it's time for coffee and time for a late lunch. Let's give this a shot. Happy Yak Express Beef Shepherd's Pie. It smelled really good. It smells really good. Okay, as far as the weather goes, I did just get a little bit of service and it shows a severe thunderstorm coming this way. My guess is within 45 minutes, it'll be here. Just like the previous meal, which was like Mandarin beef, there was just no flavor to it. And this is pretty much the same way, unfortunately. It's very, very bland. And I'm someone who likes food bland, but this is too bland for me, so. One thing is for certain, it is dark. I'm having a hard time seeing right now. And it's only six o'clock. We're at the point now where it's just nonstop thunder. Everyone, cheers my friends, cheers. If this is my last trip out, know that I'm going out happy. Very, very happy. If you watch the channel for a while, you know that I love instant coffee. There's something so comforting about being out in the forest. It's raining, the thunder's crashing, and you have some nice warm coffee. That's pretty special in my book. It's the perfect environment for me. While Taster's nasty all by itself is not that great, again, it's kind of comforting. It's a good morale boost. That wakes you up more than coffee does. That's, that's getting closer. It's pretty funny, a few weeks back I received an email from a viewer. He said that he found some hazelnut coffee, which I'm, I'm drinking here. He was out on his camping trip the next day, the next morning he made his coffee. And he's like, God, he's like, that tastes like shit. But yet, it sure is wonderful. <laughs> that's so funny, that is so funny. Before I wrap up this episode, I want to leave you all with this. When it comes to the outdoors, one has to be flexible. They have to be able to adapt. Nature requires patience and respect. 
and if you don't give both, you will be punished. You have to adapt to the conditions and be flexible, rather than trying to force your will upon the conditions. Nature is going to tell you exactly what you can do and what you can't do. The storm is upon us now. I'm seeing flashes of lightning. It's pouring out there. That rain is coming down sideways. Well, there's the hail, it's back. Golly. I'm not sure if you all can see it, but the temperature's dropping. It's now hailing out here. Tons of hail. It's about marble size. Let's see if I can pull up the radar. Because of the cloud cover, I have no service, unfortunately. So, we are in the dark. The cell, the main portion of the cell, is over here to my north. Incredibly windy. Very, very cold. It's not sounding as vicious as the first wave. There might be some thunder, some lightning, but I think the severe storms, that part's passed on. And because of that, I think I'm going to break down camp. It's time to go home. It's time to get warm. Talk about it being dark. Even with my headlamp, I could barely see anything. I tried to wipe off the camera as good as I could. That's as good as it gets. All right, folks, that wraps it up for this trip. It's time for me to go home. It's getting dark and I've accomplished what I wanted to. We have explored this incredible mountain, just a small little piece. Together, we've gone through some incredible thunderstorms, marble-sized hail. Too bad lunch was not very good. The uh, Happy Yak Express or whatever it's called, it's just not my thing, not my thing. I need a little bit more flavor, if you know what I mean. Before I go, make sure to hit the thumbs up because it does help the channel. You can support the Outdoor Gear Review if you enjoy adventures like this. You could do so on Patreon or on YouTube. It is appreciated. You could join the Wolf Pack. Also, before I go, I should mention this. I have set up a merch store through YouTube and it is open now. You will find a link down below. So uh, yeah, feel free. 
feel free to grab yourself a coffee cup, a shirt, a hoodie, a hat, whatever you want. With that out of the way, let's go. It is conditions like this that can kill you just like that. When I got here today, it was in the high 50s. Now, it's in the mid 40s, but the winds are blowing. Oh no, whoa, get ready. The winds are blowing about 40 miles an hour as you can see It's conditions like this that cause hypothermia to kick in It's zapping every bit of warmth out of my body just by being out here in it. Has it been raining hard? Yes, it has Woo! It's just about completely horizontal. <laughs> Woo. How is that for vicious? We've been hiking on top of that mountain there. And we set up camp right on the edge of the forest. I have some hiking to do. Woo! Golly. That wind gust there is about 50 miles an hour. So hard it's stinging my face. Strength and honor everyone. Take care, be safe. I will see you in the next episode.